السلام عليكم The second lecture we will speak about some of the important viruses related to UGS infections These viruses are the herpes viruses and we have tackled the herpes viruses with the CNS for example CNS1 cytomegalovirus is also part of the herpes a human papilloma virus and moloscum contagiosa we are going to go through these four viruses in more details and see their importance in the UGS infection what are the learning objectives of this lecture to describe the structure of these viruses morphology replication cycle <clears throat> serotypes of the viruses you know serotypes are important also we'll speak about epidemiology <clears throat> of the diseases caused by these viruses we are going to describe the pathogenesis and the role of human papilloma virus in cervical cancer cervical cancer <coughs> cancer on qurraham in females very important and we will speak about vaccination against hpv also we are going to describe the cell culture and serological diagnosis for the identification and also we are going to talk about antiviral drugs in their treatment these are the themes of the lecture starting with the herpes virus the family herpes viridi i always tell you when once you see viridi it means family these are large double stranded dna enveloped viruses of eight human types type 1 2 3 or 4 are they have icosahedral capsid متعدده الجوانب tegument and lipid envelope you can see it the tegument this is the tegument هاي الصوره شفتوها قبل هذا النيوكليو كابسيد tegument and then you get the envelope so what we have is the tegument and lipid envelope we said uh, they are of the human herpes virus hhv human herpes virus 1 to 8 adna eight types mainly we are going to deal in this lecture with the three of them first of all a human herpes virus type 1 and type 2 and in particular type 2 why type 2 because it is sexually transmitted mainly herpes 1 we have dealt with it in the cns but we said that one also recently has been described with sexual contact but two classically is transmitted by sexual contact as well as we are going to talk about a human herpes virus type 5 which is cytomegalovirus This is the virion of herpes simplex virus. Virion يعني complete viral structure. This table also we have explained it before to you. We are going to deal with the first uh, type and second type and the fifth type. Uh, herpes simplex type 1 uh, transmitted by close contact infect the mucoepithelial cells can cause oral fever blister ocular lesion and encephalitis and the latent infection is nerve ganglia we have mentioned this with this cns type 2 it is herpes simplex type 2 close contact sexual contact look to this point very important also infect mucoepithelial cells genital area anal lesions severe neonatal infection and meningitis also we have mentioned it with the cns uh, one 
nerve ganglia. We come to five cytomegalovirus, also close contact, sexual contact. That is why we are studying it with the UGS. Congenital also can be transmitted during a pregnancy. A blood to blood during a transplantation is very important. The cells that are infected, the T and B cells, leukocyte, lymphocyte, monocyte, it can produce mononucleosis-like infection, severe congenital infection. If the infection occurs during the pregnancy, it will be very severe. Infection in immunocompromised, it can cause gastroenteritis, retinitis, and HIV. I mentioned it, pneumonia. Retinitis and HIV can lead to uh, blindness, al-ama. Latency in monocytes, neutrophil, vascular endothelial cells. That is why it is important during the transplantation and can be transmitted with the transplanted organs. Starting from the beginning, herpes simplex virus, type 1, type 2, are closely related genomically. Can be distinguished by PCR and also by a specific antibody test. Type 1 is highly prevalent. Type 2, we said, it can be transmitted by sexual activity. That is why we are going to concentrate on it during our study of UGS. Herpes simplex type 2, a primary genital herpes infection, because we have a primary and we have secondary or recurrent, okay? So primary genital herpes infection, an incubation period is about five days. And the disease once occurs, it lasts about 12 days. The lesions will appear as papule first, then become vesicles, that is to say, papule containing the fluid called vesicle. And the vesicle, the fluid will be transmitted to pus-like uh, substance. Now it is called pustules. So papules, vesicles, pustules. The vesiculopustular, which is mixture between these two, uh, they are painful and they coalesce with each other, these lesions, causing ulcers in three to five days. But these ulcers heal without scarring, matrocoether. Usually the patient gets about 20 lesions, bilateral, extensive, muntashra, urethra and cervix are usually infected with ulcers on the exocervix. You know the exocervix. The cervix has got endocervix and exocervix. Also associated with painful lymphadenopathy for months to come. Systemic manifestation may occur also. Fever, malaise, myalgia, painful muscles, myalgia. This is the genital ulcers, how you see the lesions as I have described them. This is in male, of course. Recurrent genital herpes infection usually is of a shorter duration. This is versus VS, yani versus Akis, primary lesions. There are localized genital lesions without systemic symptoms. We said in the primary associated with uh, some symptoms. Usually the patients suffer from a prodromal paresthesia, methyl 10 mil, paresthesia in the perineum, in the genitalia or buttocks for 12 to 24 hours before the lesions appear. حتى المريض أحيانا يعرف راح يظهر عند lesions بالتكرار. Usually grouped as vesicular lesion in the external genital area. Vesicular. 
The patient suffers from pain. It's painful. Itching, mild, for four to five days. A bit shorter period. The lesions may last between two to five days. Again, shorter. 80% of uh, patient with the primary lesions will suffer from recurrence in 12 months. يعني المريض اللي أصيب خلال سنة 80% منهم راح يصير عندهم ريكورنس. In recurrence, this recurrence may occur four to five times per year, maybe monthly. ولهذا السبب حكيت بالتكرار راح يعرف المريض البراسيزيا أنه الليجن راح تظهر. Then it decreases gradually. The recurrence is from reactivation of the virus from the dorsal root ganglia, and I mentioned this because the latency in the dorsal root ganglia, and there will be reactivation from there. Recurrence with a different strain is rare. The recurrence usually with the same strain. Viral shedding occurs without evident disease because these patients are carrier of the virus. So shedding can occur. Diagnosis cell culture. How to distinguish between type one and type two? We said by PCR, also by type specific antibody may be helpful. A treatment, acyclovir for the primary. Acyclovir is less effective on the recurrent herpes. Valcyclovir, famcyclovir, pencyclovir are usually used for recurrent genital herpes. So you should know this base. Acyclovir for the primary. The other three, val and fam and pen, are used for the recurrent genital herpes. CMV. Cytomegalovirus, which is a human herpes virus, type 5. Again, envelope DNA, human herpes virus, type 5. This virus produces inclusion body, which is intranuclear basophilic bodies, giving the appearance of owl's eye cell. We'll see the owl's eye. أول آي يعني زي عين البوم أول آيز أبيرنس The perinuclear cytoplasmic inclusion body also can be seen So we have intranuclear and perinuclear inclusion bodies now the cell become enlarged, that is to say cytomegaly. For this reason, the virus is called cytomegalovirus because it causes an increase in the size of the cells. The uh, infection rate is high among children and in childhood, uh, 10 to 15 percent of them become infected. Even uh, they are not aware are infected because mostly is asymptomatic. And also infection can occur early in adulthood. So the main infection, the main infection occurs at the childhood and early adulthood. This is the cytomegalovirus the owl eye appearance of intranuclear inclusion. You can see it here, okay? Transmission, close contact, sexual contact. Cytomegalovirus isolation can be isolated from the saliva, cervical secretion, semen, urine, and white BC. So it can be transmitted via blood transfusion and it become a latent infection uh, after a blood transfusion. Uh, and uh, these viruses could stay in these areas for months after the infection. 
latent infection could be primary in the CMV seronegative patient. يعني المريض اللي أول مرة يصيب in seronegative اللي ما عنده antibodies in the primary infection. While in reinfection, usually seropositive patients. يعني يكون عندهم antibodies. Cytomegalo infection can infect endothelial cells, leukocyte. Very important. That is why it is transmitted with the transplantation. And they can cause inclusion bodies, as I described. The main cells which are usually infected and are important in the latency are monocyte and stem cell. Stem cells are that in whom CD34 positive. يعني الماركر السيل ماركر تبع الستيم سيل سي دي 34 بوزيتيف فالمونوسايت والسي دي 34 ار ذا مين سيلز فور ليتنسي يعني يبقى الفيروس فيها في مرحله سبات الى ان يصير ري اكتيفيشن ميكانيزم اوف ذا ديزيز دايركت دامج اوف كورس ذا فيروس كان كوز دامج Immunological damage, response to CMV via cytotoxic cells and cytokines release. So uh, the cytotoxic cells can damage the body tissues because the virus is residing inside the cells. So once the cytotoxic cells are activated, they kill the cell and the virus with the release of cytokines. Immunity against CMV, both a humoral and cellular, of course. In immunocompromised, a primary CMV infection is common and usually symptomless. Reactivation and viral excretion, subclinical. In immunocompromised, the primary and reactivation are usually symptomatic. لاحظ هون ان اميونو كومبيتنت الشخص اللي عنده مناعه كويسه البرايمري انفكشن سيمتوم ليس الري اكتيفيشن اند فيرال اكسكريشن سب كلينيكال هاي وين بالاميونو كومبيتنت بالاميونو كومبرومايز البرايمري اند ذا ري اكتيفيشن يوجوالي سيمتوماتيك اللي ضعيفي المناعه مونوسايت انفكشن will lead to dysfunction of the phagocytic activity. To tarifun al-monocyte, will be macrophages. They say that there is dysfunction of the phagocyte. And these patients will become susceptible to infection. Activation of infected monocyte by T cells will transmit the CMV, for example, via transplantation. To tarifun ta min taakhad organ, مثلا بالكدني ترانسبلانتيشن السي ام في مهم لو اخذته من مريض مصاب بالسي ام في او عنده ليتنسي يعيش بالمونوسايت قسم من المونوسايت او الماكروفاجز قد تتواجد بالكدني بالتشيو ترانسبلانت ولهذا السبب احنا يجب ان وي دو تشيكينج فور ذا دونر بيفور taking the kidney or any tissue from him. And also we have to check our recipient for it. And after the transplantation, we have to recheck again. يعني واحدة من الفحوصات اللي تجرى بعد الترانسبلانتيشن to check for CMV. Vertical transmission to fetus in utero leading to deafness and other defects. Very important. Also, pregnant women should be checked for CMV. 10 to 15% of all women excrete CMV from the cervix at delivery. So it is common. Breast milk transmit the virus again 
this one should be careful. That is why it is important to test women during your pregnancy for CMV. In adult can cause mononucleosis like syndrome. Ta'ruful mononucleosis, uh, which is caused by infectious mononucleosis, is caused by EB virus. CMV can cause similar picture to it called mononucleosis like syndrome. As I said in the beginning, this virus can cause a blindness in AIDS. Common infection in immunocompromised. Immunocompromised, more faqat bil HIV will AIDS. Immunocompromised from cytotoxic drugs, or from corticosteroid drugs, from immunosuppressive agent, and so forth. The viral excretion, شو معنات الviral excretion? يعني المريض يعمل shedding للفيروس. In the urine, in the saliva, semen, cervical discharge, all these elements can transmit uh, CMV. Diagnosis, detection of CMV. It has cytopathic effect. You detect the antigen, you detect the DNA of the virus. Where we detect them? In tissues, مثلا, kidney transplant, or in the blood. The antigen or DNA can be detected in the fluids that I have mentioned, semen, urine, etc. Now, DNA detection can be done by PCR. Al-an, yani kull viruses, aglabiyata, their nucleic acid can be detected by PCR, which is more sensitive than the culture. Viral isolation from tissues or from a fluid or a blood can be done in tissue culture. Zero conversion, what I mean by zero conversion, negative to positive. Uh, this can occur in AIDS. Uh, AIDS people are usually, when you check them, they are positive for CMV. Remember this point, in AIDS patient, the AIDS patients are usually positive for CMV. Treatment, gencyclovir. Also, you can combine it with a specific immunoglobulin, which can reduce the mortality. Foscarnet, second choice, antiviral. Valcyclovir is also approved for CMV therapy. Cidovofir for resistant cases. Just the names which are very simple. Jan Cyclovir, Foscarnet, Val Cyclovir, Cidovofir for resistant cases. Prevention of CMV, you should check a blood transfusion for CMV. Blood transfusion should be CMV free and usually should be taken from seronegative people. When you are seropositive, you will take from the blood transfusion. Also, to be sure, sometimes you have to remove the white BC because these are the reservoir for the virus. The latency where the virus reside in, as we described. Also, CMV-free, Tissues in the transplantation or from seronegative donors, and I mentioned this, safe sexual practice. Unfortunately, there is no vaccine against it. There is no vaccine against CMV virus. We come to the second virus, a human papilloma virus, HPV, very important virus. A human papilloma virus, which is HPV, have more than 100 genotypes. The family Papova viridi, you can see viridi is the family. Genus papilloma virus. Again, DNA virus. Reservoir in a human being. That is why it is called a human papilloma virus from the name. So the reservoir in infected humans. Transmission direct contact, also by sexual contact, via genital warts 
it is very contagious مُعدي جدا very contagious and usually the infection come via genital warts ثالول زي الثالول وورت معناته ثالول ذكرتها بمحاضرات سابقة Papilloma virus disease most commonly is sexually transmitted infection The human papilloma virus is the major cause of cervical cancer in women. This is one of the recent points. A great achievement, and I will speak about it more. A great achievement in virology to link this virus with the development of cervical cancer in women. Also, this virus can cause other type of cancer, penile or vaginal cancer not only cervical cancer, also can cause non-genital cutaneous warts. More than 100 genotypes, I said. More than 40 serotypes can cause genital lesions also. However, there are certain types which are common cause of these lesions or these words. Type 6 and 11, remember, 6 and 11 cause genital words in 90% of the cases. And also in other areas, not only genital, but mainly genital words, 90% of them are caused by uh, serotype or genotype 6 and 11. Also, genital lesions here I am speaking about words. Genital lesions, also type 16, 18, 31, 45, and 56. Genotype 16 and 18 causes 70% of the cervical cancer. They are responsible for, this means that other genotype can cause it. But 70% of the cervical cancers are caused by type 16 and 18. وهذه الأرقام احفظوها 6 11 6 18 من راح نجي على الفاكسينز راح نعيد هاي الأرقام. Pathogenesis a human papilloma virus infect sequimus and columnar epithelium which are present in the cervix and anus, you know, your histology. Now, uh, this virus gene or products E6 and E7 implicate in ecogenicity. Yani, el genes or product tabah hal virus, tabah gene or gene product. اللي هي E6 و E7 are responsible for the oncogenicity, a tumor production. E5, E5 نحن E6, E7, oncogenicity. E5, benign papilloma. فإذا الستة وسبعة هم more with malignant tumors. A human papilloma DNA found in 90% of cervical carcinoma. حكينا 70% هم جينوتايب 16 و 18. And usually we can detect these types with PCR. This person, Harold Housen, discovered the relationship between a human papilloma virus and the cervical cancer. And he was awarded the Nobel Prize for his discovery in 2008. It's a great discovery. Here we can see the different lesions that are caused by a human papilloma virus. We said warts, not genital, these are on the fingers, okay? A planter on the sole of the finger uh, of the feet. Also, uh, flat warts on the face. You can see them 
here with magnification, uh, flat words, right? The plantar words, and also condolomata acuminata, which are known as enogenital words. You can see them around the anus. And remember the word condylomata acuminata, because we are going to come back to the word uh, condylomata lata with syphilis in the last lecture. So remember, we have two types of condylomata, condylomata acuminata with HPV. This is extensive condylomata of vulva caused by HP6. This is the colposcopic examination photograph. Colposcopic, that is to say, cystoscopic examination of the cervix in women. And you can see that there is a zone of a transformation with diffusely, when you add acetic acid, you get white material, white coloration. This is an indication that the patient has got HPV infection. So if I ask you, how you know that there is HPV infection in the cervix? You say to me, you add acetic acid, and if there is infection with HIV, with HPV, you get whitish scattered coloration, diffusely scattered. Diagnosis of HPV, this virus cannot be grown in tissue culture. Antibody test not useful, stay positive. It can lead to poikilocytosis. What is the uh, poikilocytosis? The poikilocytosis of different shapes. You get perinuclear cytoplasmic vacuolization, vacuoles. Perinuclear cytoplasmic vacuole. You get a nuclear enlargement of the cells in the cervix or vagina. And this uh, can be detected in pap smear. You know pap smear from your pathology. Papa Nicola smear called. Papa Nicola smear. Very important and very simple test. And all women should be screened for it. And I will speak about it in a minute. Also, this virus can be detected by immunoassays, like ELISA, in nucleic acid hybridization and PCR, in nucleic acid amplification tests, we say to them. These tests are more sensitive than the PAP, PAP smear. Remember PAP smear, very important item, very hot item. This is the pap smear, abnormal. And I said, uh, poikilocytosis. Look to the poikilocytosis. You may get two nuclei in the cell. You may get vacuolation around the nucleus, different shapes. So the pink color and the blue are sequamous epithelial cells. Abnormality, double nuclei, a clear area around them. And most abnormal smears in young women are due to HPV infection. When persistent, it is considered as an important factor in the development of cancer. And this, uh, uh, the, there is a score called SIN, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. There is a score uh, one to three, and this can be related to the development of cancer. You will have it in your pathology. Treatment, cytotoxic drugs or surgical operation. Cytotoxic drugs can be used. We are not going to go into the details of it. You will deal with it in other subjects, for example, in pathology or in pharmacology. Laser and freezing with liquid nitrogen can be also used 
to uh, clear or to treat some of the words. Carcinoma, the cancer, radiation therapy, or radical surgery can be used. So cytotoxic drugs, laser, freezing, radiotherapy, and surgical approaches can be used for treatment. And each has indication and its details. We are just giving you highlight. The prevention. Mohemli prevention of the HPV. We have two recombinant vaccines. One is genetic engineering. We have got bivalent vaccine and the quadrivalent. Thunai wa rubai. Thunai bivalent, which is called Cervarex, HPV 16 and 18. Usually for cervical cancer or protection, very important. A quadrivalent, which is called Gardasil, it contains 6, 11, 16, and 18 genotypes. We produce neutralizing antibodies, or protect against cervical cancer, and genital warts can be given to girls from the age of nine to 12 years, and women from the age of 13 to 26 years. Also the males can receive this because they may develop cancers also of the penis, for example, uh, from uh, 13 to 26. But mainly for females, the three doses, six months apart. In some countries, every woman should be screened and given the vaccine. Cervical cancer is a quite dangerous cancer and may come early in life, not like other cancer delayed. It can be delayed, but also may come early in the uh, life of women. The last one, molluscum contagiosa. It's a benign cutaneous pox virus, double-stranded envelope, transmitted by direct contact in shower rooms, in pools, and also by sexual contact. In incubation period, two to eight weeks. The patient will have nodular, pale, firm, pearl-like, they look, look lesions of two to 10 millimeters. Painless, called molluska, that is to say between a bracket, water wart. What is molluska is water wart. So remember that molluscum contagiosum can cause molluska, which are wart, painless, hard lesions, or called water warts, painless, implicated, be hazayu surra bil wasab, surra, implicated with cheesy material. If you evacuate, you get cheesy material from these wars. They disappear usually within two to 12 months. I said benign cutaneous wards, uh, limited to the epidermis. Remember, this is very important point in histological examination. They are limited to the epidermis. They don't go deep to the dermis. The diagnosis, the clinical, the clinical picture, the clinical examination will tell you this is a molluscum contagiosum ward. Or you can detect histopathologically eosinophilic inclusions. Eosinophilic, and you red in color, right? And the treatment is by curitage, a tanzif, yani. The virus, this is the molluscum contagiosum virus. It has the nucleic acid surrounded by core membrane. It's a dumbbell-like appearance. يعني زي هذا الدمبل تبع الرياضة. Right? And it has soluble protein antigens 
and there are lateral bodies here from both sides. And the patient have core membrane. This is the core membrane, the blue one around the nucleic acid, and the virus is enveloped. This is the envelope uh, around the virus. You can see the uh, papular lesion of molluscum contagiosum of a patient with AIDS. Sometimes it helps in the diagnosis. Is wart like pumps. Look, these are the pumps here. Um, molluscum contagiosum usually appear pink in color near the eye, raised, slightly implicated. If you go to magnification, you will see central amplification. This is the historic pathology that I have told you about. The epithelial cells have got a crater form, identation and inverted lobules of keratinocyte, of keratinocyte containing eosinophilic inclusions. The epithelial, uh, the epithelium over the edge of the lesion are raised. Shuffle epithelial here are raised. So inverted uh, lobules of keratinocytes containing eosinophilic inclusion. This is characteristic of molluscum contagiosum. But rarely we use this histopathology profile because most cases can be diagnosed on a clinical basis. Any question? If you have any question, any comment, please do ask. Any question? Right. If you don't have any question, we have to stop here. And I hope to see you, inshallah, tomorrow at 11. We have a lecture, also an important lecture. See you then. Assalamu alaikum.